So I'm focusing on how to estimate the prevalence of a drug use in a particular patient group. I mean, prevalence of antidepressants in patients with chronic kidney disease. The first point I encountered, difficulty I encountered was how to identify a particular patient group or a study population. And of course, it's case by case. I mean, depending on diagnose, disease database and country practice. But there are some strategies to identify particular patient group. And in the case of chronic kidney disease, diagnosis is kind of notorious for its low sensitivity. So if available, I wanted to use these biochemical information such as blood test and urine test. And my decision was blood test. And I didn't decide to use urine test, mainly because, of course, urine test is very attractive to identify proteinuria. But I found that the testing, testing rate of proteinuria was less than 20% in the UK general population by primary care physicians. And another difficulty was there was no way to differentiate proteinuria by infection and proteinuria by kidney disease. So urine tests may be conducted at the time of urinary tract infection. So there could be misclassification of proteinuria status. So considering the possibility of misclassification and missing data, I decided not to use urine tests for my research. And this is a kind of uh, criteria, uh, established criteria internationally, CKD criteria 2002. And my research study population is equivalent of EGFR estimated glomerular filtration rate calculated by serum creatinine results, equivalent of stage 3 to 5. So I, my research focus was this patient group among CKD. And these days, more sophisticated CKD classification is proposed. And according to this classification, my study population is, I mean, this is, role is about based on blood test. And the column is based on urine test. And my research was focusing on this group. And these days, reviewers tend to ask, how about microalbuminuria or urine test? But it's very difficult to adjust or identify urine results in UK primary care data or in many primary care databases in which, un unless urine test is very common by primary care physicians. So that's a reality. And this is a common trajectory of kidney function decline over 10 years, from 2004 to 2014. And in real world data, blood tests may be conducted at the time of acute illness, infection. So in that case, patient kidney function may be temporarily dropped, named acute kidney injury. So to reduce a possibility of chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury, I needed two kidney measurements to identify CKD population to exclude patients with AKI, acute kidney injury. So by graphical representation, I included, so patients uh, measure their kidney function at different timing. And at the second time, EGFR less than 60 was observed, I included each patient into CKD cohort and established a kind of CKD cohort in my study. Okay, as such, among 4 million patients registered in CPRD between 2004 and 2014, aged 18 or older, I identified 260,000 patients with CKD stages 3 to 5, accounting for 6.5% of the general population. And I confirmed that this is generally representing the UK CKD population because I compared these patients with nationally representative statistics as a validation study, health survey for England. So you can see this is women, but men was similar. So by age, the prevalence of CKD was very similar between the databases. 
So by doing this kind of validation study, you could make your research more variable. Okay, so by identifying CKD population, the question was what is the prevalence of antidepressant use in CKD? But the second difficulty I encountered was at which point should I define prevalence? The prevalence is generally defined as number of people with a drug divided by total number of people at risk in the population at a specific time point. But my question was, which I should use at a specific calendar time, like July 1st, 2010, or at CKD cohort entry? So I had two options. So if I chose number one, it's like this. So this is the CKD population. And this is the second option. So if I was I wanted to estimate a prevalence in the general population, probably I chose the first option. But if in a particular patient group like CKD population or diabetes population or cancer patients, patients are identified as having a disease at different timing. So that if you focus on one calendar time period, the number of patients included in the analysis is limited. So in this case, I decided to use the uh, number two option. So I looked at the prevalence of antidepressant use at cohort entry for every patient. And I looked back six months according to previous studies using UK data to identify prevalence of antidepressant prescription. And as such, I estimated a prevalence of antidepressant use to be 16.3% in CKD patients. And if stratified by cohort entry timing, I found that this was gradually increasing. So in 2013, 20%, meaning that among patients with CKD, one in five patients are on antidepressants at one timing. So I felt like to say this is high, but the matter is I couldn't discuss by this number high or low because there is no comparison. So let me use some kind of example. So Nishikori, I often cheered for Nishikori and this is London final and Wimbledon and this is Davis Cup between Japan, in Japan and UK. And people often say that Nishikori is smaller than other players like Roger Federer. But my impression I saw him in Wimbledon was he's quite tall and taller than other Japanese. So what I mean is the comparison, totally matter of comparison, whether or not this is high or not. So I needed to make an appropriate comparison group. So what I did was I had two, four options. So one, all the others in CPRD. And the second option was random sample from CPRD. And the third option was Asian sex matched patients. And number four was propensity score matched patients. So first, I felt like to choose number two, number one or number two. But what I found was the Asian sex distribution was quite different between the groups. So if I chose number two, maybe it's nothing different from comparing older people and younger people about antidepressant use. So I needed to use Asian sex match patients without CKD. And the fourth option may sound attractive because by propensity score matching, you can select patients with similar backgrounds as patients with CKD. But I tried this and found that a number of successful matching was very small because these patients, patients with CKD, are most likely to have diabetes, heart failure, and smoking status. And if I try to find propensity score matched patients, there was almost no patients with diabetes, heart failure, and smoking history, but no CKD. So depending on disease, 
sometimes you should use propensity score matched patients comparison group, but in my case, I was, this was not functional, so I used third option. Okay, so as such, I selected randomly with the same age, sex, in addition to the same general practice and calendar time for more fair comparison, and the same number of patients. And let me note that in this process, 20,000 patients were dropped because these 20,000 patients were 90 years old women. So most of them had CKD. So I didn't, have, I didn't find any comparison group from this population. But I mean, for prioritizing fair comparison, I dropped these 20,000 patients and then compared this group and that group. Okay, and this is kind of graphical presentation explaining the same. So this is CKD cohort, and I selected ra randomly a patient with the same age and sex at the same timing of cohort entry and made uh, a comparison group or no CKD cohort, and then compared prevalence of antidepressant use between the groups. And this was 16.3%, as I said earlier. And a comparison group, this was 11.9%. And stratified by timing of cohort entry, the association was nearly parallel over time, so nearly 1.5 times always. So now I would conclude that more confidently that patients with antidepressants, the prevalence is higher than the general population with the same age and sex in the same GP practice. Okay, so do you have any questions? Ah, you know what I had. So, yes, I had 97% of my, I had a little bit of a little bit レジスターしていてでまああの拒否すればいわゆるオプトアウトシステムって言って拒否すればまあ除かれるんですけどまあそれはまあレスダンファイブファイブパーセントとか少ないと言われていて。確かにすごくその純歴史データ目に見てきて私も純歴史データを使ってて追跡性っていう意味であの非常に見力があるんですけど六十五歳までとかでも私よりも学生さんも。はい。Okay. okay, so I mean, I found that diagnosis was not very useful because patients with CKD diagnosis almost always had creatinine results then in their record. But I mean, among patients with serum creatinine results, only a small number of patients had CKD diagnosis. I mean, so, so yeah. Blood test because I mean there is no big difference. I mean by by using patients with I mean CKD diagnosis, there is no additional benefit. Okay. But sometimes I mean yeah, depending on the disease, some patients may have only diagnosis but no blood tests. So that I mean depending on for example if if this is diabetes, you may need to use both diagnosis and hemoglobin A1C, something like that. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, of course, it's, it's totally up to disease and database and country practice. So, it's important, yeah, at the time of validation study, 
you make several strategies and which is the best for the database or for the disease. Thank you. Any other questions?